All right, guys, welcome to the next tutorial. This next few slides are going to go over some tips for using OneNote 2013 to be really efficient as a student, be able to organize some of your notes, be able to check out some of the different views and use some of the different features inside of OneNote. One of the coolest things you can do with OneNote is you can switch the view to fit kind of your style or what you look at and how you want to work. There's three types of views. There's the normal view. Okay, that's number one right here. There's the full page view, and then there's the dock to desktop. Okay, the normal view shows you the default view of OneNote, shows all your pages, all your sections. The full page view clears out all the clutter around the outside and the toolbars and just makes the one page you're on fill the whole screen. Docking it to the desktop is great for multitasking, like browsing the internet for information because it puts a little OneNote dock over on the side of your screen. On the next slide, I'm going to show you each of the views, and then I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try switching the views on OneNote in your machine. So just quickly visually so you can understand what they look like. This is what normal default view looks like. And in a second, I will go back and I will show you how to switch the view on each one. This is what full page view looks like. And this is what dock to desktop view looks like. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you how to switch the view and then I want you to pause and practice doing that. Okay. So we just were talking about the different views that you can see inside of OneNote. And here's a OneNote that I have just up. I just kind of started it. It's a demo notebook that I'm going to use throughout all these tutorials with you guys. And we're going to look at views first. So I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to come up here to the top along the toolbar and I'm going to click view. Now here you know, so you can see I'm in normal view. So this is the normal view where I have my, my pages, I have my sections, I have my bookshelf with all my OneNotes on it. Okay, this is the normal view. If I click full page view, you can see now my notebook takes up the full page. And because it takes up the full page, it allows me to focus on what I'm doing at the moment. To get back to normal view, all I have to do is come up here and click this little double headed arrow and it takes me back to normal view. Just along with the third view that we talked about, docking to the desktop, again, from the view tab, choose dock to desktop. And now you can see, I can see my desktop over here on the left side of my screen, but I can still have one note over here on the right. That makes it very useful if I open a browser and want to go somewhere on the internet to be able to see what I'm researching on the internet and take notes over here on the right side of the screen. So that dock to desktop is very, very useful when it comes to combining two resources together. Go ahead and take a second, open a OneNote, and check out the different views. Pause the video, and when you're ready, come back and play to see the next tip. Using page templates is a really powerful way to organize information inside of your OneNote and give you kind of a framework to work in as you're taking notes or as you're doing research or as you're building a project. Okay. Again, after each of these, I will show you how to do it. And then I want you to pause and do it yourself. But from the insert tab under the pages group, you'll see a page templates icon. You can see right here where that icon is. Okay. We'll go through a few of the page templates in a second. One of the types of templates you can use is notes. And you can see here, when you click on page templates and then click on academic, which I will do in a second and demonstrate for you, you'll see that it pre-populates the page with a notes format. You can check out different ones. There is Cornell notes. There are other ones that are in there that you can use that make real nice structures for you to take your notes in. Okay. I just got done talking to you a little bit about page templates. So let's look at how to actually insert a template. We're going to come up here to the top to the insert tab in OneNote, and then we're going to come over to page templates. Okay. You can click on it or you can click the drop down arrow and choose page templates. You'll see the templates pop out here over on the right side of the screen. I'm going to click academic and now you can see I have simple lecture notes, detailed lecture notes, lecture notes and study questions, math science class notes, history class notes. I'm going to choose simple lecture notes and then you can see, bang, right off the bat, over here on the left, that template loaded into the page. 
I can switch that template by choosing different things. You can see every time I do a new template, it adds a new page to the section of my OneNote. This allows me to quickly add notes pages for different classes that I'm in. There's other different templates you can do, and why don't you go ahead and pause the video and play through some of the templates, insert some of them, and see what the different ones look like. Just be sure that if you're not going to use these later, when you're done, come back over here to the right side of OneNote, and either right click on the pages and hit delete to get rid of them or you can just click the delete key. Now if you feel like writing on paper, okay, like if you don't like writing in the blank open space, you need those lines so you can write and keep it together, you can using the view tab go to rule lines which you can see right here and then you can see there are some different options and one of which looks like paper. Okay, or you can do wide rule paper, or you can do grid lines like graph paper. Okay, so you can combine those together and make it so it feels like you're writing on actual paper, even though it's digital on a computer. All right, so we're going to show you how to do some grid lines or other lines so that it feels like you're writing on paper. Up here at the top, we're going to go to the View tab, and then from the View tab, you'll see under Page Setup, we've got Rule Lines. We're going to click the little drop down here and then you can see here are my different types of rule lines that I can insert on the page. So I'm going to put narrow ruled and now my OneNote page looks like paper and I'm able to write on it or type on it and organize my information just like I would on regular notebook paper. If I'm working on something in math, I can set grid lines and now the grid lines allow me to go ahead and draw in different items like, you know, a Y axis. Okay, so I can draw a y-axis okay so there you go not working as well as I wanted it here but I can go ahead and come in and draw a y-axis draw an x-axis wow that's terrible but you get the idea and plot points along there Screen clipping is one of the abilities inside of OneNote that allows you to screen clip anything on your screen, put it into OneNote, and then annotate over top of it. As you can see, if you hit the Windows N button, or the Windows button, and then the N key, you should get this screen here. All right, you'll then click on the screen clipping tool, which is the one that looks like the monitor with the little scissors next to it, and you'll be able to draw around an image on your screen. Then you'll see this box comes up, which asks, hey, where do you want to put it in OneNote? Once you put it into OneNote, then you can annotate over it, just like we can annotate over this PowerPoint, or we can annotate over anything inside of OneNote. When you do copy info from a website and paste it into OneNote, so if I have a website up and I screen clip over it, you can see right here, it puts the link into the OneNote. So that makes citing your sources and tracking information so much easier. Let's talk about screen clipping. You're going to see on your computer, you should have an icon that looks like this one down here, where it's a OneNote logo, but it has scissors next to it. You also might see that logo down here in the tray of your computer. And these, this is called the Send to OneNote tool. You can also access it by hitting the Windows key on your desktop. Okay, So if you look at your, your keyboard, you should have a Windows logo. Unfortunately, there's not one on here, but it is right down here where this smiley face is, okay, on your keyboard. If you look at your actual keyboard, you should see one, a thing that looks like the Windows logo, okay? It looks just like this Start Menu logo down here in the bottom corner, okay? So you could hold that Windows key down and hit N, and you'll see the Send to OneNote tool will appear. Now, what we can do is we can now take a screen clipping, okay? So if I'm out on a website, all right, let's see, I'm out on, say, W, I'm going to go to nationalgeographic.com. Okay, so I'm going to go to nationalgeographic.com, and let's say I want to take a screen clipping, okay? Maybe of this growing ice pack, or as I scroll through, we've got prehistoric cousins, had skulls, okay? Archaeologists find shipwrecks. Whoa, check this out, look at this diver in the middle of all this jellyfish. Wow, that's a really cool picture if I was talking, if I was doing a project about like underwater sea life. So maybe I want to take a, a photo of that and I want to take a screen clipping of that. 
So I'm going to get it locked in there. I'm going to use my send to OneNote tool and I'm going to click screen clipping. Now see how my screen dimmed out and how my mouse changed to a crosshair? Now all I have to do is start at the upper left corner or the upper right corner, whichever one you want, click the left button of my mouse and hold it down and then drag a box around what I want to take a picture of. When I let go, it's now going to have clipped it right inside of OneNote. And now that it's clipped it in there, I can move that around or do whatever I want with it and put it right into other one notes that I want by copying it and pasting it or cutting it and pasting it. And that's how you can take a screen clipping and bring information right into OneNote. Tags. I cannot stress enough tags. They are amazing. Okay. Using tags allows you to organize your notes on your OneNote and allow it to find allow to find them very simply and easily later. There are some basic tags that are built in, and if you go in, up into the toolbar, under the um, the main toolbar, the one that loads right off the bat, you'll see that there's a window that looks like this. It says tags. Now you can do a to-do tag, which gives you a checkbox that you can mark off when it's complete. You can do an important tag, which puts a star by that material. You can do a question tag that marks questions that you may have about things. There are tons of tags, and one of the coolest things is you can make your own tags. So you can tag information for your different classes. Then, once you've tagged things, you can use the Find Tags option to see all of your tags and create a summary page. Okay, so you, you can see here, here's an example of what to-do tags look like. So on the next slide, we'll go ahead and work through how to make some tags, and then you can have some time to practice yourself. All right, so we're going to talk about tags. Now, here's a little uh, OneNote that I use for a project that I did at a different school. See, I've got several different tabs here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tags to tag information that's important. So all I have to do to tag information is select the text that I want to tag. So you're going to click and hold with your mouse and select that text. And then up here in the Home tab, right here where it says Tags, I can add a tag. Now notice it says control plus two next to it for important. That means if I hold down the control button on my keyboard and then hit two, it will tag it. So I don't have to come up here to the toolbar and click it. So I can do a to do tag if I wanted or an important tag, but I'm going to go ahead and tag this is important. And you can see now it's put a little star over to the right of that. Again, I can come in and tag this second thing is important. And this time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to hit control two and you can see bada bing bada boom it put a star right next to it okay so now I've got those tags these two things tagged if I come over here to another one of my tabs let me go ahead and take this and tag this as well as important so now you can see I have different information on two separate sections tagged well what if I want to go in and find that information without having to search through all my tabs and look for which tags are important I can click find tags right up here. So in the home tab under tags, click find tags. And then you'll see it gives me a nice summary of all my important tags here. What's cool is that once I've finished tagging, I can hit create summary page and that creates a new page in my OneNote and pulled all of my important tags together. So you can imagine as you're researching inside of your classes, if I put information in my OneNote or I'm taking notes and I want to tag it as important to remember later or tag it to like say it's important to remember for a test or I can even click this drop down window up here in tags and hit customize tags to make my own. Okay. But now I can really quickly build a study guide because I just tag the information in the OneNote that I think is important. I hit create summary page and now it pulls it all together into one page on my OneNote. Really, really powerful tool inside of OneNote to use tags and the summary page to build your own study guides or bring information together that you've researched for a project very quickly and very easily. Use the computer to help you work smarter, not necessarily harder. OneNote also reads all your handwritten pages and titles and text and converts it to text automatically. Even if your handwriting isn't beautiful, my handwriting, terrible garbage pathetic you would think that i'm still in second grade but honestly one note still can recognize it as you can see here in this screen right here all right 
And where you do that is under the draw tab, there are two options, ink to text and ink to math. And we'll, I'll show you those again in a second. Now you can check your math in OneNote, which is really, really cool. And while you still need to show your work for credit, you can check if you got the right answer. So as you can see here, we did 8 minus 2 times 3 plus 4. You hit equals, and then you press the space bar, and then it puts the answer in the box. So while that allows you to check your work and check to make sure you have the right answer, make sure that you always show your work for your teacher. Inserting documents in a OneNote are one of the most powerful things you can do. This is how you can share documents with your teacher if they choose to use a class notebook to share documents back and forth. But then if you also are sharing a OneNote with a, a friend or one of the students you're collaborating, you can put documents into the OneNote, double click them and open them, edit them, and then save them. And when you save it, it will automatically update in OneNote. It means you don't have to share documents in O365 if your group is sharing the same notebook. Now remember, Always pay attention to what the teacher is asking you to do. If the teacher is asking you to share a document with them in 0365, do that. If they're using a class notebook and they're telling you to put the file inside the document, inside the OneNote, excuse me, do that. Okay. These are some tips and tricks of OneNote that you can use, but we don't want you to. We want to make sure you're still following the proper procedure in class. But if you go to the Insert tab, you'll see you have some options to do a file printout, a file attachment, or do a spreadsheet. And those can be inserted into a OneNote page, and then they're stored there. As you can see, here's an example right here. We've got design tips for PowerPoint, and we've inserted that PowerPoint file. That file now lives in the OneNote, and if we were to double-click on that file, it would open up, and you can make edits and then save it. And then anybody else who has that notebook shared to them would be able to see those edits as well. All right, so we talked about inserting files. I'm going to show you how to do that. From your OneNote uh, home, kind of your OneNote page, you're going to click the Insert tab. And then up here under Files, you have three options, Printout, Attachment, and Spreadsheet. Now, Spreadsheet, if you click the down arrow, allows you to insert an existing Excel spreadsheet you have on your computer or a new one that you want to create right now. And that spreadsheet will live in the OneNote, and you can save it and update it. And anyone you've shared your OneNote with will see those updates. File Printout allows you to insert a printout of a particular file. So if I click Printout, and then I go look for a Word document, okay, or in this case, let's do this PDF document. Okay, this is the bell schedule at Turner Bartels. So I'm going to hit Insert, and then when I hit Insert, it's going to open it up. It's going to do a little printout, and then you can see it's inserted the printout as well as the file into this OneNote page. So that's how you insert a printout. If I just want to insert a file without the printout, I just click File Attachment, and then find that file that I want, and hit Insert. And then it gives me the option again, because a lot of times where you pick files to insert, it could be a Word document or a PDF, so OneNote wants to make sure, hey, did you want to attach the file, or did you want to do a printout? In this case, I'm going to do Attach File, and you can see there's the file right inside of my OneNote, and to open it, all I have to do is double-click it. And bang, there it's open. So why don't you go ahead, take a minute, insert a file into your OneNote, whether it's your class notebook that you have for a teacher or whether it's a notebook that you use to organize your notes, but practice inserting some files into your OneNote and that they can save. If you don't want them there permanently, make sure when you're done inserting and practicing that you right click on the file and, or excuse me, you click on the file once and then hit the delete key on your keyboard and it should go away. There you go. So there's the file has been deleted out of my OneNote. All right, take a second, practice inserting files.